How's it going folks, Stu here. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you may have picked up on a few things that kind of, I don't know, are right up my alley in, in the cinematic world. Two of those are French language cinema and South Korean locations. I just, those, that stuff in film? Yes, please, lather it up and, and slap it on my body. So imagine, right, for a second, my excitement when a film comes along that merges those it's, ha it's ha I don't know where that sentence is going. That film has come along that merges those. That film is Return to Soul, which has immediately just kind of leapt up my year ranking so far. Because good grief, this film was an absolute delight. And I just want you all to know, I am holding back every urge possible not to make a pun on the word soul. Um, I'm not going to... Don't do it, Stu. Do not do it. Return to Soul, more like... Ouch, my soul. Fuck! So, Return to Soul is a new film from Davy Cho, who is a Cambodian French filmmaker. I've never actually seen any of his work before, but I believe this is his second feature film, and it basically tells the story of a French woman who is South Korean by birth, but was adopted by a French couple when she was a baby, who returns, you guessed it, to Seoul in her later adult life to try and reconnect with her original birth parents. It's one of those films which I didn't actually know a huge amount before, but went into kind of as blind as I could on the basis that people had told me it was really, really great. And I let myself just kind of go into it and experience what it has to offer for itself. And what it had to offer was just an incredibly kind of, I guess, mature and emotional and charming and fun and twisted kind of route through identity and kind of finding yourself, I suppose. Immediately finding it incredibly hard to talk about this film without sounding like a wanky man. The story itself, I guess on paper, if you're listening to the synopsis I've just explained, kind of presents itself as a thematic narrative that I think we've seen before in a lot of films. You know, people trying to learn a lot about their past in adoption, but maybe not necessarily just adoption. But immediately Cho's approach to this story presents itself as just not really interested in, I guess, the same formal sensibilities of going through a story like that as other films we've seen before. It feels totally unique in its approach, I guess, in the way that it is able to narrow down on its central character and follow the world through her eyes and, and learn about her in relation to her environment and her upbringing and her family and the people around her. It feels like a film which kind of enjoys and finds delight in constantly I suppose, subverting the way that you might go through a story like this, but while simultaneously not losing sight of the film it's supposed to be and the emotions at hand here, it's a constant balancing act, I think, between getting lost in this central character and then coming back to the realizations of what this character is going through, if that makes much sense. Very hard to talk about without spoiling things, I'm realizing, but I just loved that approach to this film. It makes for a incredibly satisfying watch in it's unpredictability and not knowing where the story's going to go. And I don't mean that in that it's gonna, you know, suddenly turn a page into sci-fi at a certain point, or it's gonna become a horror film, or big aliens are gonna come, and it's, it's not that kind of unpredictability. It's unpredictability within the realm of the drama that the film is working its way through. But it's refreshing and surprising, I guess, in the places that Chow sits tonally in these scenes that we may have seen before. And at the heart of all of that, that drives this entire film outside of the direction and writing is just an incredible central performance from Park Ji Min here in the lead role. She is so unbelievably good. I really do strongly feel like this is gonna be probably one of my favorite female performances of the year. Why am I singling out? Probably my favorite performance of the year so far. It's a troubled character that makes her own decisions and does things sort of out of the box, I suppose, in many ways, but in a way which doesn't feel cliche or conventional. There are so many ways that this role and this film as a whole could have slipped into, I guess, eye rolling cliche, but it never does. It's always able to avoid that. And part of the reason it's able to do that is because it has got such a great lead performance. It's one of those performances which is able to tell so much just in the way that they act and present themselves, right? It's a screenplay which is never fully kind of throwing things at you and shoving it down your throat and it allows the performance to really do a lot of the heavy lifting here. So scenes will sort of fleet between being really fun and charming to being really quite emotional and poignant to being quite dark and, you know, that's a difficult place for performers to go to from scene to scene, let alone within the same scene. It's always impressive 
when performers are able to do that so effectively on screen. And I think this is her first big feature length role, which is batshit nuts. And I think her performance particularly is on many levels kind of a microscopic look at the things that I love so much about the film as a whole in all the departments. It's kind of ability to fleet between different tones and atmospheres so satisfyingly and interestingly and its ability to effortlessly draw out emotions in scenes that you're not expecting those emotions to come out of. The screenplay and the direction and the performances and the look of this thing and the music which never particularly overbears itself all work so well together to create a film which just is constantly invigorating and engaging. I just love this film. It's one of those films which just kind of comes out of nowhere, grabs you and just refuses to let go. I love those films. There's a few of them dotted in every year and this year, this is the first one I think of those for me that has just immediately grabbed me. I love this thing and I can't wait to watch it again. But what about you guys? Have you seen Return to Soul yet? It's out in UK cinemas. It'll be out on Mubi, I believe, in a few months if you want to catch it then. Anything you thought about the film, let me know in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe. The button is down there for that. You can also find links for my socials in the description down below. Instagram, Twitter, Letterboxd, you name it. I'm on it. Go check me out there, I guess. I will see you guys soon for some more thoughts on more films. But until next time, I I just want to, I just want to go to South Korea. I, I really want to. I need to do it, don't I?